Now I'm going to talk three core features of macro robotic totally today. Number one, what is dynamic joint balancing? Number two, what are the steps undertaken to achieve that dynamic joint balancing? What is gap capture in flexion and extension? How to titrate the position of the implants according to gap capture and alignment philosophy? A few case examples. And everybody knows this is the basic workflow, preoperative planning, CT scan, OR setup, array placement, patient landmarks, and intra-op adjustments, and what we call uh, dynamic balancing. So this dynamic joint balancing is the one which is very unique to the robotics. And what does that mean? Surgeon controlled intraoperative adjustments made to the preoperative plan in terms of implant positioning before bone preparation based on real time dynamic assessment of the patient's ligament tension, both in flexion and excision. This is a very, very important point. In other words, you are attaining accurate balance and alignment of the choice even before the cuts are made. So this is the number one point which everybody has to appreciate. Unlike navigation or conventional, where you cut and recheck. Steps of the dynamic joint balancing after exposure and bone registration, joint balancing involves two main steps. One is a gap capture in flexion and extension. Two, altering the position of the implants to achieve the balance of gaps in flexion and extension. So gap capture and extension, you can see that. We put the arrays and get the joint straight. And again, gap capture and flexion, and we put two osteotomes and lift it up. Let me admit, this is the most vulnerable or weakest point in the uh, robotic joint replacement, because this is still very crude way of uh, doing these captures. But now the tensioners are coming, probably in one year it will be more scientific. Now, what is the target of the gaps, 18 millimeters? Why? Because the distal femoral implant is 8.5 millimeters, poly and tibia 9.4, so that comes 18 millimeters. That means if you put a gap of 18 millimeters as your target, that means 9 millimeters poly will go there. Now let us say various knees, there are different types of deformities. Some of them are tight medially. You can see here 13 mm on the medial side. Some of them are loose laterally. You can see 23 millimeters on the lateral side. Or some of them can be both. So implant positioning, this is the beauty of any robotics. Both components can be moved in six degrees of freedom to attain patient-specific optimized balance and alignment. For example, femur, you can see here, varus valgus cuts, you can change here. External rotation, inter rotation, you can change here. All the green is implant. And even in the sagittal picture, the flexion extension also can be done here. Same is the case with stevia, varus and valgus, and you can slope. All of them can be changed before cutting the bone. Now, positioning of the anchor point is crucial. Let me dwell one more minute here to explain to the people. The anchor point is nothing but a pivot point on which the axis is moved. For example, you can see this is the pivot point. There's a neutral. Now let us move this to the uh, lateral side and now put the two degrees varus that will open the medial space. The other way, you anchor the point on the lateral side and put a varus again, it will close the lateral side. And if you want to do both sides, you put the anchor point in the center and do that, that will change the both sides. So now positioning of the anchor point is say, three degrees of external rotation femur affects change in three different ways based on where the anchor point is placed. You can see here, this is a neutral. Now here, it is opening the medial side, it is closing the lateral side, and it is closing on both sides. So by changing the anchor point, you can do everything. Now Ashok and uh, even before Harish, spoken about kinematic alignment and all that. I'm not here to debate which alignment is better. But what I'm saying is, if you want to go to the functional alignment way, robotics is the best way to do that because it will tell you or quantify even three degrees and four degrees here. So that is the beauty of it. So what is the mechanical and kinematic alignment? Just a brief slide. Here, the 90 degrees cut to mechanical axis balances by soft tissue release. In other words, equal gap, uneven bone cuts, horizontal joint line. Whereas kinematic alignment, equal gap, even bone cuts, oblique joint line. That is a different part. So here the oblique cuts, the balance is by implant position, and the functional alignment is a middle ground, what we are following. So in other words, by changing the implant, three degrees this way, that way, you will minimize the uh, soft tissue release or need for soft tissue release. And let me tell you, nowadays the focus is on the milieu interior, what we say, the joint has got multiple ligaments, so we cannot go on releasing the ligaments left, right, and center. 
so the more you preserve the soft tissue envelope the more is going to be the stable knee what we call the milieu interior that's why the titration code has come so that means we will cut more bone and try to achieve the end point rather than cutting the soft tissue so armed by all this knowledge of what are our gaps in flexion extension our target being 18 mm in all four quadrants what happens when the anchor point is moved around and finally what alignment strategy you want to follow these are the uh, information we got now let us go to some examples now we can see case example here here this is the captures extension 20 mm 17 mm 19 mm 16 mm you can see the in uneven gaps so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to see the medial tightness here so i'm going to put a 1 degree varus here step 1 you can see that i pin the lateral tibia and open this one so that has opened on the medial tight has become now 18 and 18 in both flexion and extension that means medial balance has got but still lateral side is tight so lateral side is loose sorry so now next step what i did is we put the pin on the medial tibia and put the 1 degree varus and that will open on the uh, you can see lateral gap is reduced step 2 and step 3 external gap is balanced now so just by doing two steps i managed to balance both these things so you can see here and now extrusion of the femur i put the pin on the lateral side and now i have gone to the femoral side and i moved the external rotation and now all the gaps are equal so in other words 20 mm 19 in extension flexion 17 and 16 on the medial side this has become now 19 19 in all the quadrants by simply moving 2 degrees varus cut into tibia 1 degrees varus into femur and 1 degree external rotation of femur three steps all these three steps are quantified and they are visible on the screen so that is the beauty now i got a completely balanced knee now case to example i am showing the video it takes exactly 15 seconds you can see that by 23 20 22 20 by doing these three steps in one single stroke i am getting all of them into single box of 18 this is just to show that we don't need to worry about the time so in mechanical and robotic the major difference is the planning now here we plan cut and then the check balance and recut here nothing okay. yeah sorry can you see that yeah okay yeah yes you are visible yeah sorry sorry i think uh, yeah okay right so the robotic is the plan assess adjust and final cut so before cutting we are planning that is the single most advantage sometimes when the deformity is severe as ashok showed we cannot balance by just changing the implant position let me concede that i am not here dogmatically such situations we rely on soft tissue balancing and reduction osteotomy also to balance the knee these are done after the cuts are made for example see another gross varus now 29 degrees of varus after uh, table we have the 11 degrees correctable and then after osteophytectomy it has become 7 degrees varus now by doing this uh, 2 degrees varus tibia 1 degrees varus cut and 2 mm distalize the femur i now got this into a nice 19 and 19 balance so extension gap is balanced this is called mid resection um, protocol so now extension gap is balanced and now i go to the flexion gap and i will put this tensioners and i will again 2 degrees external rotation by anchoring the medial side and 1 degree external rotation by anchoring the lateral side rest of the cuts are completed this is the pre op and this is the pre op gate and pre op patient and this is the post op so in other words what i am going to tell is post op clinical status take home message dynamic joint balance balancing is a great tool balancing happens even before cuts are done very rarely recuts are needed i believe attaining perfect balance plus functional alignment is beneficial to the patients because you are cutting less of the soft tissue so there is no debate here it is one of the methods of getting a balance the advantages are cutting without cutting you can do everything here but still in the gross deformities you have to do soft tissue balance but by minimizing soft tissue balance and by altering the implant positioning you can achieve the end point that is a perfect balancing and my feeling is by maintaining this milieu interior of the joint mid flexion instability will be a thing of the past thank you so much